We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. You know, growing up from where, I, where I'm from, um, there's not too many people to make it out. Deshaun Watson is, is special. He's an incredibly humble young man, has a great perspective on life, loves the grind of what he does every day to be great. How committed are you to getting this organization to the next level? Everything. A broken rib, punch your lung. I mean, torn ACL, whatever it takes. I mean, they have to really keep me off the field. So, I mean, keeping, yeah, keeping the eye out ball coming out, whatever it <laughs> takes. Until that doctor is forcing me and holding me down, I'm, I'm on the field trying to win. September 14th, 1995, in Gainesville, Georgia, Deshaun was born to Dean Watson and his father, Don Richardson, who was rarely in the picture. Dean was a single mother of four, and Deshaun was the second oldest, having one older and two younger siblings. For the majority of his childhood, they lived in a small public housing apartment in the rougher section of Gainesville. I grew up with pretty much nothing in the hood, the ghetto, and whatever you want to call it. It was maybe a two-bedroom, a government apartment with seven people in there. His mother worked multiple jobs to be able to make ends meet for the family. But getting out and exploring the neighborhood, Deshaun would play pickup football and basketball with the neighborhood kids. And every time, he would always be the youngest one, which built his competitive spirit. By the time he turned 11, his life would start to change for the better. His mother put in hours upon hours volunteering for the Habitat for Humanity organization, which helped build new homes for single parents or low-income families. Fitting that description, Dean decided to apply for one of those homes, and they were approved. At 11 years old would be the first time Deshaun would have his own room and bed to himself for the first time. I remember that first day in the house, just a special moment. Just seeing that, you know, my mom's smile and, and face, and just seeing my little brother and sister, and, you know, the whole family was just excited just to, you know, move into a house finally. And, um, you know, it was just very inspirational and something that I would never forget. They were given a four-bed, two-bath, fully furnished home thanks to retired Falcons running back Warwick Dunn, who fully furnished the place for the Watson family through his charity. That connection with Warwick would give Deshaun early access to the NFL way before he was even drafted in 2017. He spent the summer of his middle school years working at the Falcons practice facility, which was about 10 minutes away from his home in Georgia. He would pick up footballs during practice, take care of team's equipment, and fold it towels. I used to go there for training camps and snag the balls and get the balls ready before practice, wash the laundry bags and get the towels and things like that. So uh, I was a behind the scenes guy to get everything prepared. Pretty much anything the players needed, he said his crew took care of it. And that experience taught him how to really work hard. He explained that as a kid, he always hoped to play in the NFL and his job as a ball boy showed him it was possible for his future if he remained determined and focused on his goals. But just like you, it's older and play football. And that's, that was the only difference, it was the, the level of competition. And that role started at Gainesville Middle School, where they ran the same scheme as Gainesville High School. Starting at quarterback, Deshaun showed his incredible arm and displayed his leadership. Bruce Miller, who was the high school football coach, would attend the middle school games to get a feel for the talent that he was going to receive in the next year or so. When he saw Deshaun play, he knew he had his quarterback that was going to win the state championship in the years to come, while Deshaun was only in the eighth grade. Following his eighth grade season, he participated in the high school varsity squad during summer practices. After performing well, he sent a message that he was prepared to challenge the rising senior quarterback for the starting spot. Bruce took the whole summer and studied practice film for hours to evaluate Deshaun and the returning quarterback to decide who was going to start the season. Two weeks before the start of the 2010 season, Miller told Deshaun that he won a starting job, and he was a 14-year-old starting as a varsity quarterback, and he was the first freshman to ever start for the varsity squad. We started him as a freshman. Uh, I mean, a, he never has played a JV down 
while he was in high school. And ever since then, it's been, it, it was the Deshaun Watson show here at uh, Gainesville High School. With his calm, mature nature, Deshaun quickly took over and started to display he was prepared for the task at hand. His first start came against three-time defending state champion, Bulford High. He passed for three touchdowns in a lopsided loss, but clearly was on his way to a record-breaking high school career. He had 2,100 passing yards and 17 touchdowns along with 570 rushing yards and five touchdowns and leading his team to a 10-2 record as a freshman. But right before going into his sophomore year, the Watson family was taken by storm when his mother was diagnosed with tongue cancer. She was quickly taken to Emory University Clinic where she had to go under treatment for a few weeks and they told her that she was gonna to have to lose her tongue. And it's this, and it was a hurt time, so Following her surgery, she spent another two months in the Atlanta Hope Center. And during that time, Deshaun and his younger siblings were bouncing around from family home to home. Seeing his mother go through that, made him even more stronger after fighting her own battles and seeing eventually overcoming them motivated him to never give up on any of the hardships that came over his own life. Uh, at the time it was hard when I first heard it. Um, you know, right when she told me I just started bawling, crying and uh, you know, I made sure I asked her was it a death cancer and she told me no and that's when you know, I, I told myself I can handle it. Also during his senior year he got a new position coach Mike Perry who would become more than just a coach. Knowing Deshaun grew up without a father he would become somewhat of a father figure slash mentor. The time Deshaun spent with Coach Perry and the hours upon hours they spent studying film turned Deshaun's skills up a notch. That year, he led them to the state semifinals, but it wasn't until his junior year where he would actually win the title. By the end of his junior year, he led the Gainesville to the state title and took the Georgia high school career record for passing touchdowns in total yards. Actually, I told one of my friends in seventh grade that uh, my junior year, we're going to go to the state championship and win it. And, you know, it happened. By the time he finished his high school career, he had 13,077 passing yards, 4,100 rushing yards, 63 rushing touchdowns, and a state record 218 total touchdowns. After leading Gainesville to a 46-9 and record as his starting quarterback, his number four jersey would have been retired, but he insisted that his younger brother be allowed to wear it. He was rated as a dual threat quarterback and a top recruit of the 2014 class. As for his recruitment, he was receiving offers from the top programs, Alabama, Auburn, Florida State, Cal, Georgia, LSU, and Clemson. But choosing Clemson was a no brainer. I didn't really let, you know, pull me away from Clemson. Yeah. Dabo had built a relationship with Deshaun dating back to his sophomore year after going to a couple of Deshaun games. And when Deshaun went to the summer camp that year, they had offered him. Deshaun said he's a huge vibe type of guy and loves when people get off good energy. And Dabo did just that every time they would have a conversation leading up to his commitment. Dabo had promised Deshaun that he wasn't going to recruit another quarterback for about two years if he chose to go there. And that he was going to form the Clemson offense around Deshaun. And um, we're, hey, we're not getting a 2013 quarterback and we want you to be our guy. And so, you know, I trusted in them, they trusted in me, so I took it and ran with it. Knowing that, Deshaun wanted a chance to play as a true freshman. So he was able to graduate from Gainesville early and arrived on campus at Clemson in January of 2014. The first person he met once he arrived on campus was his student advisor, Maria Herbst, who he called Mama Maria. He told her he wanted to graduate early, just like he did in high school, to hurry his process to make it the NFL. Deshaun was for sure the key to get his family on the right path financially. Mama Maria told Deshaun he was crazy because it was unheard of graduating college early, especially for a college athlete. But he was dead serious. She told him okay, but it wasn't going to be easy. But Deshaun was a man with a plan, ready to attack anything in his way. As for football, he started as a backup behind Cole Studd, but still received some snaps. And after Deshaun went 29 of 41 passing for 480 yards and four touchdowns and no interceptions, outperforming Cole, he was then named the Tiger starter in week four of the season. The then 19-year-old true freshman dropped dime after dime of the Tar Heels secondary for 435 yards and a school record six touchdown passes in a 50 to 35 victory. Five of his six touchdowns were for more than 20 yards, highlighted by his first career score on a 75 yard bomb in the first quarter. Now as a starter, one of his coaches challenged him and made him promise to never lose to rival South Carolina. And he accepted the challenge to never lose. 
you know, that's something I told Sweeney that I never want to lose to those guys. I want to be that quarterback that, you know, win all four years. But little did he know, by the time it was their turn to meet up on the schedule, Deshaun was going to be a little banged up due to some injuries from prior games. See, he broke his bone in his right hand in the game against Louisville. He left in the first quarter and was out for the game. And as a result of the injury, he missed the next three games. He returned the game against Georgia Tech, only to suffer an ACL strain, missing most of the game. During the following week in practice, it was reported that Watson had tweaked his knee, which he did not play in the Georgia State game that week, but came back the following week in the game against state rival South Carolina. The Tigers had not defeated their in-state rival Gamecocks since 2008, heading into the matchup in Death Valley. But with the determination of Deshaun, who led Clemson rise to number 21 in the ranking at that point in the season, change was in the air. He once again found success on the deep ball, one for 70 yard and a 53 yard scores. He finished with 269 yards and two passing touchdowns, two rushing touchdowns and zero turnovers in a 35 to 17 win. It was, it was one of the most incredible performances I have ever seen, uh, ever and did all that on a torn ACL that was revealed publicly after the game. Fast forward to his sophomore year, he had a successful season. In 2015, he led Clemson to an undefeated 12-0 regular season and a number one ranking in the polls. He threw for 4,100 yards and 35 touchdowns, adding 1,100 yards on the ground for 12 touchdowns. That performance earned him to be a finalist for the Heisman, being the first ever Clemson player to ever be nominated. But he finished third behind Derrick Henry and second place Christian McCaffrey. But with that out the way, it was time to finish the season. They faced off against the number four seed Oklahoma Sooners in the Orange Bowl. After a slow first half, Deshaun recovered himself over the final 30 minutes as Tigers outscored the Sooners 21 to nothing. The then sophomore finished with 332 total yards, 187 passing and 145 rushing and two touchdowns in route to earning offensive MVP honors with a 37-17 victory. And 11 days later, they were to face off their daunting Alabama defense in the national championship game. And while Alabama rolled a tightly contested 45-40 win, it wasn't for the lack of effort on Deshaun's part. He gave the number one Alabama defense all he could handle with a 405-yard performance for four touchdowns alongside 43 rushing yards. Clemson fought right up until the final seconds in a highly entertaining finale, as Deshaun's last touchdown pass came with 12 seconds left on the clock. And that was the game he surpassed the 4,000 passing yard mark and 1,000 rushing mark, being the first player in history to do so. But after a devastating ending to an undefeated season, Deshaun was given some advice that would change his life. He was told not to let the highs get him too high or the lows get him too low, which came from the newly rookie quarterback at the time, Cam Newton. But Deshaun is, is a special person. He, he's a person that uh, you know take take has took his uh, opportunity and made the most of it. Do I think he's done? Absolutely not. Deshaun was getting praise for the season he just had as an individual and was happy, but confused at the same time because being a true team player, he knew the mission wasn't completed. So he took that dedication and fuel and applied it to the next season, where everything will finally come together. Deshaun took the 2016 season personally. He knew he wanted to make it his last season, so to make that happen, he had his best season yet. In the last game of the season against rival South Carolina, he closed off with six touchdowns tying his own program record in a 56-7 beatdown. That marked the largest margin of victory in rival history since the turn of century and was the final time Deshaun played in front of the home crowd in Memorial Stadium. Talk about a way to go out on senior day. And as promised, he left Clemson with a 3-0 record to his name against South Carolina. He finished the season throwing 4,500 yards and 41 touchdowns to go along with 629 yards and 9 touchdowns on the ground. For the second year in a row, he was named one of the finalists for the Heisman Trophy, along with Jabril Preppers, Baker Mayfield, D.D. Westbrook, and Lamar Jackson. He again came up short of the winning as Lamar took the college football world by storm that season, but he became the first ever player since Jason White in 2003 and 2004 to win the Davey O'Brien Award in back-to-back -back years. That year, he was also selected as the winner of the Johnny Unitas Golden Arm Award and was the first repeat winner of the Manning Award. But fast forward to the playoffs, after defeating Ohio State 31-0 in the semifinal Fiesta Bowl and receiving the Offensive MVP award for his efforts, it was revenge time in the national championship game against Alabama. And his last rodeo went in just as every college football player dreams with a game-winning touchdown pass in the national championship. See, Alabama just retaken the lead with a 30-yard touchdown by Jalen Hurts 
With just two minutes left on the clock, Alabama's reliable defense retook the field. The score seemed to be the final nail in the coffin for Clemson, but as they say, play to the final whistle. After a exhausting first start to the drive, Deshaun brought Clemson to a first and goal situation with 14 seconds left. Now with 6 seconds left on the 2 yard line, he found Hunter Renfro open in the end zone for the score as time ran out. As for Deshaun, he finished with a 420 yard, 4 touchdown performance with 0 turnovers against the Royal Tide. And that victory ended a 35 year drought in between Clemson's national championships and it brought Deshaun's 2013 tweet to life. Me in the national championship game, I'm just waiting on that moment. And on November 8, 2016, he declared for the NFL draft. And a month later, as planned, he graduated with a degree in communications after three years at Clemson. After being selected with a 12th overall pick, he hit the ground running and broke the common stereotype that rookie quarterbacks couldn't have success early in their careers. He made his first regular season appearance on September 10th against the Jaguars after Tom Savage was benched at halftime. In the third quarter, he threw his first NFL touchdown, a 4-yard pass to DeAndre Hopkins. He finished with 102 passing yards, a touchdown, and an interception. In six games as a starter, he revolutionized the Texans offense and had arguably the best season that a Texans quarterback had displayed in a while. However, on November 2nd, he tore his ACL in a non-contact play during practice, which ultimately ended his rookie year. In the seven games he did play that year, he finished with 1,700 passing yards and 19 touchdowns on eight interceptions. He also rushed for 270 yards and two touchdowns. And after a successful recovery, he bounced back in 2018. And for his first full season as a Texans starting quarterback, he finished with 4,100 passing yards and 26 touchdowns on nine interceptions. Making his first playoff appearance in his career, he and the Texans hosted divisional rival Indianapolis Colts in the wildcard round. Deshaun completed 29 of 49 passes for 335 yards as Texans lost by a score of 21-7. 2019 was a little shallow for him as he only finished the season with 3,800 passing yards and 12 touchdowns. The Texans finished 10-5, making it all the way to the divisional round against the Chiefs. He threw for 390 yards and two touchdowns and rushed for 37 yards and a touchdown as the Texans lost on the road 51-31 after blowing a 24-0 lead in the second quarter. At the start of 2020, he was blessed and able to really extend a helping hand to his family and just the people in need around him as he signed a four-year, $177.5 million contract extension with $111 million in guarantees. But on the field, as a team, the Texans did not perform well, finishing with a 4-12 record. But as an individual, Deshaun had his best year yet. He clinched the NFL passing yard title and the franchise single season passing yard title. He finished it all with 4,823 passing yards and 33 touchdowns on only 7 interceptions. Oh, and quick fun fact, he became the first player to lead the league in passing yards on a team with at least 12 losses since Jeff George on the Raiders in 1997. But with trade rumors in the air right now, it'll be interesting to see where he end up come the start of the 2021 season. Wherever he may end up, hopefully the momentum stays and he just builds off this great year he just had. But before you go, I just ask that you do this huge favor for me like this video and subscribe with notifications on if you enjoy this content but it's your boy cam stay healthy stay hydrated until the next one i'm gone